In this video, we'll take a look at the Waitrose homepage, understand its performance characteristics, and look at what we can do to optimize it. First, let's just look at the metrics. We can see that the large content for pain score in this lab test result on Debug Bear is 5.02 seconds. So it's taking quite a while for page content to show up. And we can also see that matching in the rendering frame strip, where for over four seconds, no content is visible, then content starts to appear, and finally the main page content shows up as well. And if we go into the Web Vitals tab, we can see that that doesn't just happen in a lab test. Actually, the real user crux data from Google also shows that only 67% of visitors have a good experience, and the typical load time is 2.98 seconds. To understand the performance of this page, we can click on the largest content for paint metric to get more information about how this page is loading. First of all, we can see that the largest content for paint element is an image, and that it takes quite a while to load, so the request takes over 4.2 seconds. And we can also see that reflected in the LCP subparts breakdown, where the time to first byte isn't too bad, so the server responds fairly quickly, but then it actually takes a long time for the browser to actually realize, oh, I need to download this image. And that's shown by the load delay metric, which takes 3.56 seconds here. Now let's take a look at the request waterfall. So we can see all the resources that are loaded from the server while the page is loading, and at the same time, we can correlate that with the rendering progress. One of the first interesting things we can see here is that the Waitrose website uses a browser feature called Early Hints. So when a server responds to um, the request for the HTML code, we can see that in this case, it takes um, 1.05 seconds for the browser to start returning the HTML code. And that's just because there's some sort of server processing or rendering happening on the server that takes a bit of time. However, even before the HTML code is generated, the server knows that certain resources are going to be needed anyway, for example, these fonts as well as these style sheets. So the browser can return something called an early hint. The early hint is a 103 status response that tells the browser that it should start loading certain resources, even though the actual HTML response isn't ready yet. So what you can see is that the early hint requests actually start before the TTFB, before the first byte of the HTML response has actually been received in the browser. We can also see that downloading the HTML actually takes quite a bit of time, and that the HTML response is 196 kilobytes compressed, or about two megabytes uncompressed. So this is quite a large HTML document. We can expand this request and look at the size analysis, and it's gonna tell us what is actually in this HTML document. And the main thing you can see is actually embedded JSON code. So they have some sort of uh, JavaScript application with preloaded state, and all this JSON is embedded on the page. And I can click on each of these to get a more detailed breakdown of what is contributing to the overall size. And we can see that there are just the, um, a large number of items in this like, taxonomy data, as well as in the content uh, data, which is mostly locations. And we can keep going down and trying to figure out, okay, what's actually in here? Um, I'm not totally sure, but it's just a lot of kind of different components that are being displayed on the page. So if you want to like speed up the download of this file, we can look at this HTML breakdown, look at the JSON size analysis to understand like what is the biggest impact changes that we can make to reduce the size of the JSON and reduce the size of this hydration state, which is used to generate hydrate um, the JavaScript application that we have on the page. Next, we can see that there are also a couple more render blocking requests. And render blocking requests prevent rendering on the page, as the name suggests. And we can see that once these requests finish, that's kind of where the blue line, the first contentful paint happens and content starts to become visible. These vendor blocking requests are a bit slow, uh, a bit over two seconds, even though they're not, they're not very big. I think one reason for that is that there is a lot of competition for bandwidth um, from other requests. So the HTML code is still, still being downloaded, and also we have this other Waitrose um, image that is also loading at the same time, uh, as well as these fonts are still loading. So that, I think, is why even though these resources are fairly small, they take quite a bit of time to download. So I think these resources would actually load a lot faster if we reduce the HTML size and maybe also remove some of the preloaded font because I think those fonts, they're not actually that small. So 15 kilobytes for a font typically is okay, but we also see that three fonts that are around 60 kilobytes. So that's just gonna uh, use up a whole lot of bandwidth. 
And most of the time, you don't really need to preload four fonts. Like one, two, or three is usually good enough. Finally, one big factor impacting the LCP score here is the way the LCP image is loaded. And you can see we have this lazy loading badge. And if I scroll down a bit, I can see the HTML and it has this loading equals lazy attribute. And that basically takes the browser that this image should only be loaded once the browser knows that it's actually in the viewport. Because a lot of the time the browser is going to load a lot of images that are kind of further down the page and it's going to compete for bandwidth with more important resources and you don't want that. So that's why you lazy load your images. However, in this case, that's not what we want at all because this is the largest Contentful Paint image, it's the main image on the page, and we want to load it uh, really quickly. And you can see that the impact of the lazy loading is that the browser doesn't know that this image is in the viewport until after the image has loaded, so that's only when the image starts downloading. So if we want to optimize that, um, we can do a few things. One is that we could just remove the loading equals lazy attribute, so that would help a little bit. Um, we could also add a fetch priority attribute. So the fetch priority attribute is kind of the opposite of lazy loading. We are telling the browser, this is actually a really important image and you should prioritize it over other resources. Another way to fix this is by adding a preload tag to the page that loads the image with a high priority. And this is what this automatic recommendation is recommending. And we also have this run experiment button and that's gonna generate the preload tag, this HTML code for me that I need to add to the page to optimize it. And if I run to run this test, I'll just click on run experiment and wait a little bit uh, for the test result to be ready. And then I can see the before and after. I can see what the impact is of adding the LCP image preload. So I've already done this here. And you can see we've made this change. And now my LCP score has gone down from 5.1 seconds to just 3.89 seconds. So the LCP, the largest content of paint element, that actually shows up a lot sooner. If I scroll down a bit, I can see this kind of rendering film strip side by side. Before the state page starts rendering, but there's nothing to be seen of the image yet until much later. Whereas now the image actually starts loading pretty quickly after page content starts to appear. And if I click on this, I can kind of compare this in a bit more depth. So you can see the start time of the request is much sooner. And that's where we get most of the benefits because we're no longer waiting for the page content to load before starting to load the image. And you can see all this low delay is basically been resolved now. So if I look at the image in the request waterfall, before it was loading fairly late all the way over here, where now it's kind of shifted to the left and the request happens much sooner and it is high priority from the start rather than chaining priority after being discovered. However, one thing we do see is that we actually now have a fair bit of load time now and the image actually loads a little bit slower than before because now it is happening sooner and at that point there are still more other resources being loaded so the image does more to compete with other resources on the page for bandwidth. And if we go back to the request waterfall, we can see that a lot of bandwidth is used on these like four fonts that maybe aren't all that important to load right away. So to test that out, we can again go into the experiments and now we look for the font preloads uh, and I just remove these. And again, I can click run experiment. And once I've done that, I'm getting this test result. So now you can see that the image preloads just aren't there anymore. And the LCP request duration is actually a lot better. So now if I look at these two kind of rendering side by side, you can see that on the right, we get the LCP image showing up fairly quickly, whereas on the left, uh, we are waiting a lot longer. So overall, our LCP score is going down from, you know, 5.4 seconds in this case to 3.51 seconds. And with this being said, uh, there is a bit of a downside to not preloading the images. So if I skip through this gradually, you can see that at some point I get a font change on the page. So here, after 6.4 seconds, next frame renders at 9.26 seconds, that's kind of where the fonts are loaded and I get a small change in the fonts. You can see the button font changes, for example, to the new font. So that is kind of the downside of removing the font preloads. So you might want to pick one or two fonts that you do want to preload, uh, but generally, if you can reduce bandwidth competition early on, that's going to help your more important resources load a lot sooner. So one quick note about the experiments and debug bear, you might be able to see that we no longer see download time for the HTML request. And that's just because the debug bear experiments don't support simulating that. Um, but it doesn't make a big difference just because in both the baseline and the experiment condition, we are making the same change and no longer having the download time. Uh, you can also see that these early hints preloads change to normal link tag preloads 
uh, and that's also part of the experiments. Another thing that could be optimized on the Waitrose homepage is uh, using the back forward cache. So if I look at the navigation types based on the crux data, you can see most uh, visits to the website are just straightforward navigations. But actually 8% of the time, the user is probably in a mobile browser or maybe also on desktop, and they're just clicking the back button or swiping to the left uh, to open the previous or the next page. And that is actually happening 8% of the time. And in theory, those navigations can be instant because the browser can just restore the existing page from the cache. But if I switch to a Lighthouse tab and look at the Lighthouse report, um, and I look for the back forward cache, you can see the page prevented back forward cache restoration. And there are three failure reasons. So if we were able to address those three reasons for not being able to restore the page from the browser cache, that would help a lot with the performance scores that we are getting for those 8% of visits that are actually just back forward navigations in the browser. We saw that the HTML document response is really large because it contains a whole bunch of JSON code. So that means downloading all the HTML code is actually taking quite a bit of time. We also saw that the page is using HTTP early hints, which means that even while we're waiting for the time to first byte, the browser can already start downloading some important resources on the page. We then saw that there are other render blocking requests that block rendering on the page. We saw that the LCP image is being lazy loaded, so it's only being discovered by the browser really late. And finally, we took a look at the back forward cache and how much it could help optimize the real user experience of this web page. If you want to test your own website, go to debugbird.com and sign up for a free trial.